the flex biggest difference, like I said, one section of logical reasoning, not two. If you want to simulate it, you can use Law Hub, aka official LSAT prep plus to simulate the flex. Idea is simply skip one logical reasoning section from the exam and do your three sections back to back, no breaks. Uh, I've actually learned that they do give a short one minute break between sections, but pretty fast. And do your practice test on the computer, not in a tablet, not in a book, practice like a game day. Go, you could go right to the next one. Yeah, so for those wondering, for the flex scoring, logical reasoning is not double weighted. All questions count equally. So easy questions count the same as hard ones and logical reasoning counts no more or no less than games and reading comp. The scores are still given to you on the 120 to 180 scale. Law schools have, as far as I've heard, universally confirmed, they will consider, and Joel can speak to this as well, consider flex scores the same as regular LSAT scores. If you got a 180 on the flex, they're not gonna say, oh, well, it's just a flex score, not a real score. It's the same. Again, the size of the, size of the, size of the paper is up to the proctor's discretion and the proctors can't, see, you can't see the proctors, but they can see you. Kind of weird, something to get used to. Maybe you wanna do a study with me or a live stream to simulate what that, what that experience is like. It's kind of weird. I mean, but you get used to it the more you do it. I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I can't see everybody here, but I've gotten used to doing these sorts of webinars. I'm not saying you have to be able to do this, but you got to get used to it at least for, for one proctor to watch you. And the flex tests are undisclosed, by the way. So you won't actually see your raw score. You won't actually see, you'll only get your score out of 180 from that 120 to 180 scale. To get a rough approximation of your flex score, there are many calculators out there. They all vary widely, wildly, uh, none of them are perfect, but two different methods here. One would simply be to take your initial raw score for the three sections you complete and multiply it by four thirds before converting it using that exam's raw score conversion chart. Alternatively, you might just wanna take your overall accuracy percentage and use that as a baseline to, test, to simulate your score out of 180. But this is just a rough estimate. So give yourself a margin of error or a score band of a couple of points on each end just to give yourself a general sense of where you're going to be. It's not perfect, but close enough. And obviously, you always want the highest accuracy possible, regardless of what the actual estimation might be. Some good advice in the chat about controlled breathing to prepare yourself and deal with the stress. That's a great idea. For scheduling, the one little scheduling hack or trick, because the scheduling a specific time is really up to you on test day that you have a range of times available from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time in 20 minute increments. I put some tips here on this slide about how to schedule early on the given scheduling date. LSAC will announce it uh, typically a few weeks before it's actually available, but you might book your October LSAT and of course scheduling is not available yet. So it comes along a bit later, but use this trick to basically uh, log into your proctor you account to schedule early. Basically, else that creates a ProctorU account for you and you can reset the password to log in. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.